So we've talked a lot on this channel about older TV shows that we watched as children, like Hannah Montana and iCarly, whose revival just got canceled, and I really don't want to talk about it. But this week, we're going to talk about something completely different. Let's go to the topic chart to see what this week's topic is. Yeah, just kidding. We're going to be talking about Victorious, you goddamn idiots. Did you not, did you click on the, vi did you see what the title of the video, did you click on the video? So Victorious was another classic late 2000s, early 2010s Nickelodeon sitcom that once again followed a bunch of young, like, teenagers who were just getting up to a bunch of old-fashioned hijinks. <laughs> and it was spearheaded by the almighty foot god, Dan Schneider, known 2000s head of Nickelodeon and overall creep. Shameless plug. And let me tell you, if you happen to watch my iCarly video and thought that that show was weird, this show was on crack cocaine. So Victorious follows Tori Vega, played by Victoria Justice, who's like this average, everyday, normal super girl. I mean, girl. I mean, girl. It's not the song. And in the pilot, we meet her sister, Trina, who goes to this, like, performing arts school called Hollywood Arts, and she's, like, really awful. Like, really bad. Like, I don't know how she got the, the scholarship to this school or, like, entrance into this school or whatever, and Tori didn't, but, like... This bitch can't sing. But anyway, Tori has to like fill in for her at this talent show showcase thing because she gets sick or like her allergies act up. Something where like her tongue blows the f up. And she does like really well at this showcase. So the school just like gives her a spot in the school and doesn't take it away from the far less talented sister. And I just, I don't know. I just feel like she shouldn't have the spot and Tori should have taken her spot. And that would have made for a more interesting dynamic, but like this is a kid's sitcom and that's how this works. So anyway, after that, she meets the whole cast of her friends that we'll have with her for the entire show. So let's just go down the list right now. We've got Andre, the singer-songwriter who plays keyboard and like writes music and stuff. You've got Kat, played by a young Ariana Grande who is by far the most talented member of this cast, but for some reason gets the least amount of solos. Also, they play her like the dumbest human on planet Earth. And then you've got Jade and Beck, the couple of the group. And Beck inspired girls from that age to be attracted to guys who wear leather jackets and smoke cigarettes. And Jade inspired boys, and probably girls too, to be attracted to big titty goth girls. Because, oh my god, Liz Gillies. And the final character who's like one of the main friends is Robbie. And his puppet Rex, who is his own character too. And like, the fact that Rex is a puppet, but his own character absolutely terrifies me to my core. So like, before we talk more about Rex, because, oh, don't worry, we'll get there. Robbie like sabotages all of the plans that the friends make and like gets all of them into trouble all the time. And he's always like the spearhead for being the troublemaker, but then plays it off like the cool, innocent guy. He also simps for all of the girls in the group at some point throughout the show. And it kind of gets really annoying. But Rex, like Rex bullies everyone, including Robbie, but he's a puppet. And Robbie's controlling him. Like, why is the puppet the sass- The sassiest- I don't like the way he's looking at me. The sassiest member of the group. Like, why is he the meanest one? He bullies everyone. Like, is it Rex or is it Robbie? And if it's Robbie, why do the friends keep letting Robbie get away with this? Like, why is this a thing that they just let happen? Have they come to terms with the fact that Rex, as a puppet, is a sentient creature that's just living amongst them, and they just have to deal with this living puppet? Because, like, if that's the case, I have a lot more questions. The one thing that always confused me about this show was its cast, and not, like, the casting choices or anything, but just how many of them mixed in with the iCarly cast? Let me explain. See, Victoria Justice played Shelby Marks, like a fighter or something, in the iCarly universe, and Daniela Monet got kissed by the crazy bitch in iPsycho. And Leon Thomas, who plays Andre, played a dude who was a musician in an episode of iCarly, and they dressed him up in a dinosaur suit. And I don't think anyone else remembers that, but I do. And again, this would be fine in a universe where iCarly is in its own show, and Victorious is its own show, and they're in separate universes, and they don't ever collide. But they are in the same universe, and they literally have a crossover episode with the two casts and the two shows. And not only that, there's also Sam and Cat, the spin-off show that literally combines Sam from iCarly and Cat from Victorious and puts them together in their own show with both casts kind of coming and going between episodes and whatnot. Like, do those characters coexist in the same universe with these other characters now? Do all of the Victorious cast know about famous fighter Shelby Marks? 
Will I ever truly be happy? So similar to iCarly, there are a lot of really weird episodes of Victorious. But this week, since I didn't want to make this video like 30 minutes long, I decided to handpick three episodes that I thought were some of the weirdest episodes of Victorious. And I'm sure they're weirder, and I'm sure you're going to comment that, but make sure to comment that and like subscribe and whatnot so I don't cry myself to sleep. So the first episode we're going to be looking at is the season finale of the first season of the show, Sleepover at Psychowitz's. And let me just explain Psychowitz to you real quick. You know what? I'm feeling really lazy and didn't write a bit for this, so I'm just going to have a video explaining to you what Psychowitz is. My God, there's a huge fire! <laughs> kidding, kidding! Just wanted to get your blood pumping, which I did. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was sucking the milk out of this coconut. Hey, Psychowitz, I forgot to ask you a question about the homework. Will we <laughs> We'll never know her question. Okay, so now that that video is done, that guy hosts a sleepover with just the students at his place of residence. That guy, that one, hosts a sleepover of high school children at his home with no adult supervision. And the parents sign off on it and they just are at his house. This guy, that guy, people let that guy have children in his house unsupervised. Again, because I don't, I don't think you're getting the point. Th they, they let him have the children in his house for a sleepover with no other parents or adults around. And they aired this on television. Anyway, so each of the cast members has to like a different character they have to be in the whole night. Um, and if they break character, they have to leave the house. And if they end up being in character the whole night, they end up getting, what was, what did they get again? Nothing. They got nothing for staying at his house unsupervised in character. Not even like extra credit? Nothing? Just nothing? Okay. Do you not see the problem with this? The next episode we're going to be looking at is an episode that was a little bit prior to this called Cat's New Boyfriend, um, but not because of the actual plot of Cat dating one of Tori's ex-boyfriends. Uh, that does not matter to me. The focus of this episode to me was the Puka Fish subplot, because this, for me, is when I realized as a child that Dan Schneider has a foot fetish. See, Trina discovers Puka Fish, which are these fish that, like, eat the dead skin off of your feet. So your feet become like really smooth, like a baby's bottom, which is something they continue to say on the episode of the show, and it really creeped me out. So she gets a bunch of Tori's friends to like try this puka fish dead skin eating thing out, and all of their feet become like really smooth, and it's really cool, and they, everyone like starts rubbing their feet, like, why are they rubbing their feet? But then they all start getting really sick, like hospitalized level sick, because apparently these puka fish were like super toxic and cause you to get really, really sick. And somehow, like even though they're banned in America, Trina just got them. This high school age girl got these banned toxic fish into America with enough of them to serve multiple people at once to eat the dead skin off their feet. And like, yes, that in itself is a weird ass plot for an episode of television. But then I think about how many times it just panned to their feet and people rubbing their feet and the fish eating at their feet and touching the feet and all of the feet things, and I realized that Dan Schneider made this episode so he had an excuse to point the camera at all of these people's feet the entire time. And finally, we've got probably the weirdest thing that I've ever seen a kid's sitcom do. At the end of season two of Victorious, they did a show where they just went over the bloopers from the episodes of the show. Blooptorious, as it was called, obviously, was a blooper reel show that took place at the end of the middle of the show in the second season, uh, and it was hosted by Rex, but it wasn't Rex because Rex is a puppet, but it was Rex, but it wasn't Rex because Rex is the puppet, but Chris is the actor who plays Rex, but Rex is a puppet, and Chris is the actor who plays the puppet, but Chris is the puppet. Does that make sense? Throughout the episode, uh, Rex, puppet, Chris, actor, Chris, puppet, Rex, would host the, the bloopers and like show all the bloopers, and then he would interview different stars of the show as the puppet, because he's the puppet whose name is Chris, not Rex, and he's also British. Oh, I forgot to mention, he's British. Like, do you, do you understand why this is ridiculous? Like, especially since it's in the middle of the show. If this was like the end of the show, like the last episode of the show, or even like in the last season of the show, it would be reasonable to do like a nostalgic look back on the show or like the blooper reel of the show to be like, hey, here's the entire show's blooper reels encapsulated. No, f*** you. You're going to get two seasons of the blooper reels and then we're not going to do another one for the second half of the show. 
Were there just no other bloopers for the final two seasons of the show? Did nothing funny happen behind the scenes? I mean, not including whatever funny business Dan Schneider was up to. And also, I just need to get, I, like, I feel like I need to get this out because I just can't. Rex is a puppet. Rex is a puppet. But in this blooper reel episode, he's Chris and he's a British actor who's playing Rex the puppet. And like, why would you do this? Like, why would you make, like, why would you let that, why would you do this? Why would this, why would this happen? So now that we've gone over some of the key episodes in the show for me in terms of weirdness, we're going to go over some of the controversies of the show because there is no Dan Schneider show that is without controversy. I mean, to be honest, I kind of went over a lot of the victorious drama in my Dan Schneider uh, video. Uh, shameless plug again. Um, but, I mean, really, it was just, like, him being really creepy and, like, Ariana Grande and Victoria Justice kind of feuding, maybe. But, like, mostly just Dan Schneider being really f creepy. Like, really creepy. Like, fish foot episode creepy. And, like, an entire episode centered around this heat wave that knocks the power out so they don't get to drink anything and basically all have to get almost naked and all the girls are in, like, bikinis and swimsuits and stuff. And it's just, like, these are teenagers, dude. And you're a grown man making television for a children's network. What are you doing? So, Victorious, did you watch it growing up? Did you think it was as weird as I did? Are you subscribed to the channel? Because if you aren't, please do because my mental health is very fragile and I really need it as a boost so I can continue to wake up in the morning. Also, remember to leave a like and comment what other shows you want me to go over in the comment section because that's where you would comment. That's it for this week's Stop in the Knowledge Corner. I'll see you next week.